Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Principia and Kerbalism. So this has got to be my first test with Kerbalism in a while. It is still in KSP 1.8.1 so it might not be with any of the more up-to-date Kerbalism configurations. This is just the last configuration I had for Kerbalism in 1.8.1 so uh, there might have been some changes compared to what you might download right now so keep that in mind. But I'm going to try it out here with the Goku spacecraft. Uh, people had commented on it before. I haven't changed the Kasei rocket. This is the Kasei rocket down here. I haven't touched it yet. Um, some people said that the color they didn't like much. But it's sort of the same color as the Atlas rocket. So, I mean, you know, depends on how you feel about that. But I'll think about changing it, but not right now. Uh, but the Goku spacecraft, some people wanted to see it on uh, the Kasei rocket and also some people wanted it to be converted to Hydrolox, so I've done both. Uh, so we now have a Hydrolox Goku spacecraft. This is again a direct lander on the moon and return vessel. So it has a heat shield at the bottom here. Whoops, I took the heat shield off too. Um, heat shield on the bottom here and it just lands. It. I haven't changed the legs yet, even though I think they ought to be changed, but there they are. Uh, the nose uh, cap goes off after launch. Uh, so now it contains hydrogen and oxygen. It also has seating for six instead of just four because I just scaled up the whole thing. Now scaling up the whole thing in order to fit the hydrogen of course and before it used to have a diameter at the bottom here of 6.6 .6 meters now it's 8.4 to fit the Kasei rocket and also SLS. But we needed to scale it up anyway because we need to fit the hydrogen with its low density but that does allow for a bigger cabin, so we might as well use it. It is heavier, of course. Uh, the Goku spacecraft before, uh, by default, 38.8 tons. Uh, this uh, reads only 45.7, but remember, a lot of that is just really low-density hydrogen. That's why it doesn't seem that much, but the dry mass is much more. The dry mass of the Goku spacecraft was something on the order of 10 tons. Uh, this one, the dry mass is 18 tons. So that is including the supplies though. So yeah, that's a big difference. And you know, to some extent, you, know, you could toss it either way. Uh, the scaling, the single dimension scale is 1.27. And uh, if you just square that, that's 1.6-ish. It's a little bit more than that 1.6. But you know, the 1.6 would cover the surface area of the tanks and the you know, whole thing. So go by surface area squaring, but then the components inside don't need to be scaled up necessarily, or they'll be scaled up by 1.5, the difference between having four crew and six crew. It's all very complicated. So uh, anyway, we've got that, uh, we've got this decoupler, and then I've got a separate hydrogen oxygen tank here for capturing around the moon. That'll still feed the same engines. The engines now, these uh, are Hydrolox engines, and they've got the stats of the common extensible cryogenic engine, uh, the config that's already in the Realism Overhaul. So it's called the CC or CECE base, and I've assumed four of them. So we've got four CECEs or CCs or common extensible cryogenic engines, and uh, they had them throttling down to less than 10%. I just set it to 10%. Uh, so they can throttle down to 10%. Okay, so we've got that. Uh, but there's so many things to test. Can this actually launch on the Kasei rocket? It's 62 tons. Um, that doesn't seem like the Kasei rocket, even with the four boosters, can handle it, but we should check. Another thing we need to check is whether it actually works with the Kerbalism. I've put some Kerbalism modules on it, and Maybe it looks good. Let me retract the... We've got two copies of the scrubger, scrubber, humidity controller, and pressure control for some reason. That's confusing to me. Um, here, uh, it says we produce 42.2, but then when I take off the rocket, we don't. And the rocket shouldn't be producing any power at all. So I don't know why it's producing any power. And worse, when I extend the solar panels, uh, and the solar panel should be making more than that 2.2 anyway. Yeah, I don't know why. Sometimes I can't click on the solar panels. Okay, extend solar panel. Okay, and when I extend the solar panel, it reduces how much is produced. And they're supposed to be doing like 3 kilowatts. It's only reading 1. 
and negative one apparently, so I'm totally confused about that power consumption. Otherwise, if we take a look at other stuff, we've got food, 28 days, I assume this is for the full complement. Oh, it's for four people maybe? Anyway, 28 days is way more than we need. We're gonna test it without crew, and it's perpetual. Well, let's put the crew in first, and then we'll talk about without crew. Um, 28, 20, 25 for the nitrogen, 28, and then uh, I don't know what the liquid hydrogen and oxygen are for. Uh, that might be... Yeah, I don't know what it's assuming there. Anyway, uh, so, yeah. Radiation, uh, it says nominal. Uh, we have no radiation shielding. We could add some, uh, I guess. There's the shielding option here. But right now we won't. I don't know how well it's going to do. Nine hours in the inner belt, one day in the outer belt, and uh, interplanetary one year. I mean, somewhere between those lies the answer for a trip to the moon. Uh, stress, 289 days. It's poor comfort, but it's pressurized and living space. Um, and our scrubbing and pressurization is good. We've got the nitrogen and we have the lithium hydroxide. So anyway, maybe it'll all work out, but I'm going to test it without crew first and see how we're going to, whether it can be tested uncrewed. I don't know. And then we'll test it with crew. So yeah, I don't know if it can make orbit. The delta V's are sort of complicated with this. And we have a lot of thrust weight ratio initially, so there's that too. What will happen? We're launching from Brownsville, and we will see. I still need to make some sort of fairing cap for the engines on the Goku, since they're exposed to the air right now. Well, um, solar storm in progress. Well, I guess we should wait. Let's see, when is the... Oh gosh, this, oh, this is bad. Um, uh, zero please, zero. Okay, I think. Inner belt, outer belt, they're the belts. I haven't seen them in a while. Okay. But we want to get to the moon, and I can set it as a target. Well, we should be past the solar storm thing. Of course it's gotta be nighttime. Up, up. Oh, right, Bounceville. I was waiting for the wrong inclination. Still a solar storm? Really? How, how, how much do we have to do solar storm-wise? Um, shadow. Okay, well, we can deal with a few degrees. I guess it's okay now? Oh no. Solar storm could pop up any time. Anyway, not that we have crew right now, but anyway, just for formality's sake. Ignition. And launch. Okay. Going through Max Q around here somewhere. One persistent problem with the Goku is that there is no abort system for it. Maybe ejection seats, but. Pulling such a heavy craft off of the rocket is not feasible. Okay, booster set. Okay, separation and ignition. I can't even see the engine. <laughs> I need to change the specularity on this one. I want to mainly check the electric charge once we get into orbit. I don't know whether we're going to end up in orbit with enough. It's close. And... Shut down. Uh, 3,415 left will be enough to go to the moon. Let's just go ahead and see what we can do here. Let's check the power first. Let's check the power first. Extend, and we have to flip around. They do not rotate. They're only facing one side. Oh, I should have dumped the nose cone. Okay, well, let's point retrograde. Now, mind you, it was never my intention that the Goku spacecraft was supposed to be ideal for anything. 
The goal for it was to be a simple solution for quick tourist missions, basically, so that we didn't have to do a whole lot of dockings uh, in order to get the mission done. So, has a very specific purpose in life. Okay, decoupling. Nose cone. And, um, yeah, we're recharging. The electric charge seems fine. And now it says electric charge perpetual here. It seems to read the right solar panel amount there, so that's good. 2.44... Well, anyway, it all should be fine. More than enough. Even when we do have Kerbals. Okay, so I'll tell you what. I think we will put some Kerbals in and then try and do more. <laughs> we will try and bring it to the moon and see how it goes. Okay, so I'm just going to pack them in. We've got six Kerbals inside. I decided to avoid the big four. So we've got Katuki, Karuki, uh, Herwin, Verbus, Joeberry, and John Duck. All good names, I think you'll agree. So uh, let's see what happens now. A storm or not? Uh, see, another solar storm in progress. They aren't that often, are they? They're like daily? One thing I'm going to have to do is maybe tweak a few numbers in Kerbalism. 27 minutes, well. Well, I mean, it is the same day technically. I did revert, so. Okay. So it is the same situation, I guess. It's not random or anything. Anyway, ignition. And launch. Katuki and Koruki. I am pleased by our selection of names this time. Yep, it has been a while since I used Kerbalism. But... I am getting ready for a potential series with Principia and Kerbalism and my rockets. And we will see how that works out. Alright, booster is set. Okay, main stage separation and ignition of the upper stage. We are in orbit. Okay, and with the 3400 we had last time too. Let's get the solar panels out. Oh, cannot deploy while stowed. Um, I don't suppose that's going to be solved soon. Maybe I should get rid of the nose cone. The other one as well? Apparently. Uh, maybe if we get rid of the nose cone, I don't know what the rules are. Okay, nose cone off. And let's see, extend solar panel. Now it can extend, only when the nose cone goes off. Oh, only that one, apparently. Uh, well, it's not ideal. Sure. Okay, let me go to the tracking station and come back and see if it'll work. Nope, uh, we've only got one solar panel. <laughs> Uh, that was not supposed to happen. However, I think maybe one solar panel will be enough. It says electric charge 17 days. And once we get rid of the upper stage there, that also consumes a little bit of power. That looks good to me. Okay. Well, oh, show a nav ball is active. Okay, well, we're gonna have to go with the stage delta V remaining in order to tell when to turn this thing off. So let me just quickly calculate. We we're expecting 293.8, or say 294 left over, and ignition. Fairly high G-force translunar injection here. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. Yes, liquid hydrogen reserve should be low. Oh, why did that go away? 
and shut down. Well, I said 294 and it's at 292. Why did the maneuver go away before we were done? <laughs> That's not right. Our moon periapsis is nowhere near where it was supposed to be. But the maneuver disappeared on me. Now we're gonna run out of the RCS on this stage. Okay, well, no, I didn't want you to ignite again. I'm not taking any chances with the six seconds we have left on that stage. Let's just separate and go with the fuel we have up here. So we'll have to do everything upside down. I gotta remember that. Okay. I love electric. Oh, well, that's that probe. Yes, we don't care about that probe. So the RCS on here is assuming. Hydrolox RCS, so 400 seconds of ISP. Could have gone with hydrogen gas, which is 260 seconds, which is not horrible, horrible. But let's uh, to keep it simple for now. You can see the JWST, the James Webb Space Telescope I have there. Unfortunately, I can't actually switch to, word, uh, to it without crashing the game for some reason. Okay, all sorts of perturbations, but all I care about is that periapsis. Be there in four days, but first we need to make sure electric charge is going to work. Okay, stop. Ah, the other ex uh, solar panel extended now. Okay, we are recharging, so that's not a problem. Some boil off of the hydrogen but not the oxygen. Uh, exposed to extreme radiation. 10 rads per hour, geez. 1% so far. It was 4% totals. Oh, some 3%. Oh, some 5%. Uh, oh, it's getting up there. Again, we have no shielding right now. Lithium hydroxide is being used. 62 tons though. So there you go. That's the capacity of Kasei with the boosters. So I just want to make sure we're not using any of this fuel. No, we're not. It's just the lower tank placed here. And it's got boil off. I think this one doesn't, but we have put 100 MLI layers on it. So it's minimal heat protect, uh, penetration and no boil off loss. Still not a guarantee we're going to go back home easily. All right, ignition. Happy little Hydrolox glue. Now, if we were willing to expose the heat shield, we could dump the intermediate tank here. But then we'd also be dumping the decoupler that is currently shielding our heat shield. I think we will dump it. I don't know if NASA likes the whole exposed heat shield thing, but hey, they picked Lunar Starship and Starship is going to have a huge exposed bottom with all those tiles, so can't be too bad, right? It's really ch it radically changes direction when I come out of time warp for some reason. We were just pointed retrograde here. I mean, sorry, well, prograde. Um, but then when I came out of time warp, it totally changed direction on me. Like, persistent rotation is not working right. So I don't know what's up with that. It was not, it's not supposed to be pointed this way. Every time I come out of time warp, it reorients in the wrong way. It is, I don't recall this happening with just Principia, but... I don't think Kerbalism should be changing anything, right? But yeah, it's very disturbing. Okay, now we're on the internal fuel. I'm just gonna let the... let that tank go then. Off it goes. We need to sidestep it though. 
Well, we're gonna go straight into the whole landing business. Well, this time coming out of time warp, it didn't reorient. I don't know, it's weird. Okay, going straight into the landing. Now, I don't know how Kerbalism is gonna work with the pass-through system, with the Kerbals seated in command chairs inside the pods. I don't know whether the shielding is gonna work right, I, I don't... maybe. Or whether anything else is gonna work right, whether the comfort level is gonna be right, I don't know. Okay, final descent. Return is gonna be tight though. Please let this throw down enough for fine landing. Uh it's getting away a little bit. Oh oh okay, okay, okay. That's okay. Alright. Well we can't get them out right now, I don't think. Um well, if we could get them out we wouldn't be able to get them back in, so yeah, we I haven't put the hatch on. Okay, 2,575 is really tight for the return. Uh, let's just check stuff. We're recharging right now with the sun there. And uh, the food, water, and oxygen is fine. We've got too much, actually. And uh, they got 14% radiation already. But I didn't put any shielding at all. 1% stress. <laughs> no CO2 poisoning, thankfully. Uh, in fact, I could probably reduce the amount of spare CO2 room we have. Okay, so that's the situation. Let's try and get back to orbit. It doesn't really matter which way around we go, as long as it's one way or another. So, ignition. Let's go this way. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, RCS on. Oops, 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 oops. But re-entry wouldn't be too much different than it was with the standard methane-oxygen Goku, and that's because we did scale the mass of the pod to the surface area, and we obviously increased the surface area of the heat shield by the same factor, so it is the same ballistic coefficient. It'll re-enter exactly the same way. And the amount of bleater is scaled by the same as well. Liquid oxygen reserves are low. Yeah, yes, they are. We still have an imbalance between the hydrogen and oxygen right now. For some reason, I'm not entirely sure why. Off to, uh, everything should be operating off of the same ratios. And the hydrogen was the one that was boiling off more. Um, we're below what I would expect we would need to head back home. Okay, well, that's a little bit high there, but only 650 is not enough. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to hold on to it here. I'm not going to continue with this. We have some imbalance of hydrogen and oxygen issues. And otherwise, uh, otherwise things worked out okay. We probably need to put on some shielding. I might reduce the mass of the thing to compensate for that uh, just a little bit. Obviously it can do the mission, but it's no good if they get so close to maxing out their, well, so close to using up their radiation allotment, let's put it that way. And But yeah, so first time configuring a pod for Kerbalism in a while, and at least it, generally speaking, works out all right. I've got the right processes working. I uh, don't know about the science transmission yet, but that'll be separate. Uh, but yeah, so Hydrolox Goku, because we're, we have to scale it up to fit the tanks, uh, I mean, if we if we didn't shorten it and then reduce the cabin size again, maybe it'll be a little bit better, so we squish it, then maybe it'll be all right. But in this form factor, it's not a huge benefit over methane and oxygen, except that we could possibly refuel it on the moon because the moon has water, whereas the methane and oxygen, the carbon is tough to come by. So, yeah. Uh, well, we'll think about it, but obviously we need to work on the delta V a little bit. We'll need more internal fuel in this 
We did have some room on the Kasei rocket because we had some left over in the upper stage after the transfer. So we could put some more fuel in here and maybe more fuel in the capture stage. So the capture stage did about right. So just a little bit more fuel in here and maybe it'll still work out. There's always the option of making this even heavier and putting, though of course that will hurt our ballistic coefficient and the return into Earth atmosphere a little bit, but making this even heavier and using more boosters on the Kasei rocket than just four, but I would like to keep it to four. We'll see how it all works, but for now, that is the first test of the Hydrolox Goku on the Kasei rocket. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.